Today I'm going to show you how to write an arithmetic sequence in recursive form. I'm going to start with a simple sequence, negative 10, negative 15, negative 20, and allow that sequence to continue. If this is my sequence, and I would like to write it in recursive form, I first need to look at how the sequence itself works. Now I'll notice that between each one of these terms, there's a constant amount that I'm subtracting. In this case, I'm subtracting 5 every single time. I can call this my growth. Even though it's shrinking, it's still the idea that you're growing or shrinking by a constant amount. Adding and subtracting by a constant amount is what makes an arithmetic sequence. And so for this problem, my growth is subtracting 5. Now, if I wanted to figure out what, say, the next, next term in my sequence would be, What I could do is I could take the last term that I knew of, which in this case was negative 20, and subtract 5 more, and that would give me the next term. So here, if I subtract 5 one more time, that will get me the next term in my sequence, which in this case is negative 25. Now, if I want to turn that into a uh, recursive form, what I could do is notice this. If I want to find the next term, so if I take the term that I'm on, and I add my growth, that will give me The next term. And if you think about this, this is the basic idea behind a sequence. You take whatever you've got and you add a, a constant amount to it, and that will give you the next term in your sequence. This works for arithmetic terms, no matter what they are, because you're adding them together. Now, if I wanted to write this as a recursive form, the way I would say that is this, a sub n is the term that you know, adding is going to be plusing something, and my growth in this case is going to be, I'm going to use the variable d for my difference. And then that will give me, this is another way of just saying equals, the next term, which for the way I've written it, is a to the a sub n plus 1. So you can see how the ideas that I wrote down about the terms that you know and then adding and the growth, whatever that growth is, will give you the next term, kind of relate to this original problem. Now, another way that I could have written exactly the same idea is to say this. The term you want to find is the previous term plus the difference or the growth. So this is another way of finding the exact same thing, but the equation for this would look slightly different you could also say the term that you want. In this case, I'm going to use t sub n, and it's a little bit of a different notation, but it means the same idea is equal to the previous term, which in this case is going to be the term the n minus 1 plus my difference, which in this case is d. And that's another way to write the exact same idea. It's said in a different order, and it ends up with a slightly different equation, but the idea is still the same. You're taking one step, and you're moving to the next step based on your growth. So you can kind of see how each one of these things comes up with a different idea. This is my T sub n for here. And I'm running out of ink. 
Wow, oh, that's awesome. This is my previous term. To give my forgive my lack of inkage. And this is my growth. And they all relate like that. Same kind of thing happens up here. The term you know in this recursive formula is a sub n. G is your growth. Or sorry, D is your growth. And the next term is going to be a sub n plus 1. Either one of those two ways are correct. They're just written a little bit differently, using different notation, but still representing the same ideas. That is how you write a recursive form for an arithmetic sequence.